What, what are, tell me about your tools here you're using. Okay, basically the, the main types of tools that we have here, we've been digging mostly with a trowel. This is a mason's trowel, uh, Mar Marshalltown. And normally that's what we use to do all the digging in around the rocks. Like get like this. We're at the walls and what we'll be doing here in the morning and things will be going back over what the SIP kids have had done to see what kinds of features, if anything, that might have been revealed by their their digging. It would get a spot while they were digging. And also, we tend to try and square up the bulks a little bit better than they do. Scooped up. Placed into a bucket. Wood, just stuff that's fallen off a tree. Now everything that comes out of each level gets sifted through quarter inch mesh screen. And we look for any artifacts and things that are found in the quarter inch mesh screen. So you get most most tiny objects. But not, not everything. And most of the I'm not going to find much in this because this is the lower level and we've not hit much in it. But most of the stuff we get here are just the spalls off the top of the, the rock shelter. These are all pieces of rock which have fallen from the rock shelter down into the, into the soil. And these accumulate over time and help build up the deposits. They also break down in many cases to help form the soil that's in that lower level. But they're not anything that's worth. I'm Mark McConaughey. I work for the State Museum of Pennsylvania and for the Chester County Boy Scout Council this, this summer. We are standing in front of what is known as locally as Buzzard's Rock. We tend to call this place Horseshoe Rock Shelter, though. It's a natural overhanging rock where people used to come and camp and stay underneath this and keep, and keep themselves dry when it's raining outside and things like that. Uh, as I said, this acts as a natural lean-to and when you're out in the woods hunting, as the Indians did, this would be a very attractive site to stop overnight when they're out looking for game. And that's apparently what they did do at this particular site. Now the Boy Scouts have also used this as an overnight camping ground. And uh, order of the era ordeal, people would come out here and stay underneath the shelter, uh, build a fire, sleep, bury the fire, and bury their garbage here at the site. And we found a lot of Boy Scout remains as well. Now we can tell you a little bit, in fact the Boy Scouts have affected the site a fair amount and most of the prehistoric Indian remains have been mixed together with the Boy Scout remains because they did build fires and being good Boy Scouts they wanted to be sure these things were out to dig up dirt and cover these things over. When they dug the dirt up though they dug up the artifacts as well and dumped that on top so everything got churned together. And uh, we can say a little bit more about the Boy Scouts' use of the site than we can the Indians because of the remains, and we know that they were the last ones in here. Uh, I know that some Boy Scout had a nice pancake breakfast up here. We found a pancake mix packet, and uh, we have found packets for jelly, for peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, so somebody had peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. Were you able there. to date these packages? Well, they're within the last 20 years. <laughs> Because they weren't the plastics and packaging and things just didn't come into the last 20 years. Uh, there's been plastic spoons, forks, knives, all that kind of stuff have come out as well. Uh, so the Boy Scouts have been using this as a nice little camping spot, just like the Indians did for quite some time. Well, the Boy Scouts have been here what 60 years? Roughly 60 years. And uh, how far back uh, do the Indians go in this spot? Okay, the Indians go back perhaps as much as. Uh, 8,000 years ago, perhaps even as early as 10,000 years ago, depending on when the, the oldest particular points that we have were, were made, because they're made somewhere between a range of about, uh, actually, 8,000 to 10,000 years ago. And when you say points, you're talking about spearheads and arrowheads, right? Right, we're talking about spear points and arrow points, and most of the things that everyone calls an arrowhead really is a spear point, or a, perhaps a hafted knife, uh, much like a pocket knife. The Indians would have carried mm -hmm. things around, just like we did, for cutting and butchering things, and 
really the, the things that we call spears are, are, are good utility tools for just about anything. They're sort of the, the jackknife of their time. <laughs> so those things do show up. But they are hunting tools as well. Now when the Indians are out here hunting, they're wandering through the woods, spending a hard day. They might uh, throw a spear at a deer or perhaps shoot an arrow from one of the later groups at a deer and miss. And when they miss, this is very rocky territory, and the spear of the arrow strikes that rock and normally it's going to break. Now the Indian would retrieve that arrow or spear, put it back in her quiver, and carry it with them till that evening whenever they camped out. They come to a camp like this, build their fire, have a meal, and then after they're done eating, they sit around a campfire and repair the tools that either broke during the day or if they had caught something, perhaps like a deer, and they had to butcher it up, uh, the knives and things they were using might have gotten dull. So they then resharpen those tools at the site. So they do the pull of the broken arrows or spears out of their quivers, pull off the old broken point, throw it away, put a new one on the, the shaft and be ready for the next day's work. Take the knives and things that were dull, knock little chips off of the edges to make a new sharp edge and then keep that for later use as well. What we find primarily are broken spears and arrows and the little chips from resharpening the tools at the site. So, uh, unfortunately, because the Boy Scouts have turned things up, we don't have any direct evidence any of the fireplaces or anything like that that the Indians did use and undoubtedly had here. Uh, I can't distinguish between modern charcoal and old charcoal, so it's, okay, it's, uh, we have that kind of problem. And it's certainly some of the charcoal that's mixed in the upper layers was Indian, but, okay, uh, the kinds of things that we've been finding here are hunting tools from the various Indian groups that used to live here. Now, for the most part, everything that we've found is prehistoric. In other words, it was made by Indians prior to Columbus's discovery of America, quote, unquote. Uh, the Indians were already here, so they had found it, and they weren't lost. But uh, they certainly were running the territory for a very, very long time. Uh, we have one artifact which dates to the historic Indian period at the and it probably was a uh, point that was made by the Susquehannock Indians, which were an Iroquois-speaking tribe that lived in this area. And this is the, the point. It's a metal arrowhead, and it's made out of a brass kettle, which the Indians would trade for. And when the Europeans first came into the region, the... Uh, uh, don't need the yellow jacket on my finger. <laughs> the... Uh, the Indians uh, would trade for metal objects with the Europeans, and what they traded to the Europeans were beaver pelts. Uh, beaver fur robes and beaver fur hats were a very popular dress item in Europe during the 1700s. And uh, that's what the Indians would trade to the European settlers for things like brass kettles, sometimes they're iron kettles, things that look like Dutch ovens, basically. Uh, metal hoes, uh, metal axes, and then later in time, they were able to trade for muskets and muzzle. But uh, before that, they still used the bow and arrow. And when one of these pots or axes or things wore out, instead of, you know, wasting all that good metal, which they hadn't had up to that time, they'd cut them up and make their arrowheads out of them. And this is one of those arrowheads. And wh how, how, uh, what, what year would you date that to? Uh, apparently, it'd be a roughly 1700, you know, 1700, 1750, somewhere mm -hmm. in between there. Let me get close up to that while you're standing right there. Okay. Lower it just a little bit. Yeah, okay. A little higher. Good. Okay, now the little hole that's in there is for hafting it, to help half the point on the, on the shaft. They actually help tie it in. And that's very characteristic of the Susquehannock Indians' style of metal points. Oh, great, okay. okay. Now, if we go back a little bit earlier, we find, uh, back into the prehistoric time, we find a lot more of the arrowheads, and they tend to be the same shape as the metal ones, but they are made out of chipped stone. And points go through style changes. Archaeologists have dated various kinds of points, or various shapes of points, at other sites, and we have a pretty good idea of when they were made. Now these are all pieces of little triangular arrowheads made out of chipped stone. Now this one is almost the exact same size as the metal arrowhead. 
and it's made out of a rock called Pennsylvania Jasper. Now the people would have had to travel up to Veracruz, Pennsylvania to get this rock or trade with some Indian living up in that area to get this kind of rock. And uh, that's a nearly complete triangular arrowhead. You can see it does have the tip and the base. So it probably was lost when somebody was in here trying to replace their arrows and it fell down in a little crevice between the rocks and they couldn't retrieve it. <laughs> Uh, it's very, very rare, again, to find complete or whole artifacts. That. And this is a piece of Indian pottery, which dates to around 1200 B. And it's made out of clay, which has been mixed with crushed up quartz and sand. And when the clay was still wet, they wrapped cords around the top of the vessel to make a decoration, and then stamped the body with some other cords. Now this is a rim sherd. It's the top of a jar. You've got the top. The neck is narrow, or narrower than the rest of the body, and it would flare out and become a big rounded jar, sort of like a globe of the earth with a little narrow neck around the top of it. Just turn it. There you go, and then turn it sideways, and then show the. Okay, we have the. This is the neck, the narrower neck, and the body would flare out and become a big rounded, bottomed jar. So is this pretty exciting to find? This particular style, this style is called Mingguanan ware, and that's just a name the archaeologist made up for it. We don't know a lot about the people who made this, this type of pottery, and it, would be, it is important that we found it here. It gives us a little bit more information about those people and what kinds of sites they were using and living at. And what would you say the date of that? Like I said, this is about 1200 A.D. is when this was made. Great. Okay, and going back further in time, we get back to things which are spears and, or hafted knives. And uh, these particular objects are spears or knives that were made by the Indians. One made out of quartz and the other made out of argillite. The black rock is argillite, and that's found over in Bucks County along the Delaware River. And again, that's something you either have to go to get or trade for. And the black point, by the way, is a point that was found by the Boy Scouts last year, and one of the things that Clark Green showed me to get me interested in the site, and come down and, and excavate the site. Now, the quartz one has the tip broken off of it, and it probably was here at the site. Hmm. These two points were found by the Boy Scouts last year, and the taller of the two probably is a spear point. It, has a broken tip and a broken base off of it, so it probably was a missed cast that was broken and discarded. The smaller of these two points uh, probably was a hafted knife. It doesn't have any uh, breakage of the tip or base. It tends to be a relatively thick point versus the rest of these, and I suspect what happened, this was and the, the edge got to be too fat to be an effective cutting tool, so they threw it out. Yeah. Now, both of these points date to around 3000 B.C. And this is before they made stone pottery. And if they had any kind of vessels, they were made out of basketry or skin hides or, you know, bladders and things that they had taken out of deer. There it is. oldest points that have been found here at the site, at least in terms of when they were made, are these two points. They belong to the early Archaic period and date somewhere between roughly 6,000 B.C. and perhaps 8,000 B.C. So that's roughly 8,000 to 10,000 years ago. Very characteristically of these early points are notching in the edges, which we call serration. Uh, and this one has a little bit on this side. The red point has both the tip and the base, you know, partially broken away. Uh, the grayer, larger point has just the tip broken off, and they probably were both spears. Mm -hmm. uh, and again, the red point is made of that Pennsylvania jasper, which they would have to get up, go up to Veracruz, Pennsylvania, to get or trade with people up there. The the grayer point is actually made out of rhyolite, which you'd have to go up perhaps to South Mountain or something like that to get. With the Indians that lived here between 1000 and 1500 A.D., uh, we found the end of a smoking pipe. This is part of a pipe, a tobacco pipe, 
and you've got the hole bored through it. And this would date again between 1000 and 1500 AD and suggest that they at least came up here and smoked some tobacco or, or their mixture of tobacco and other leaves and bark which they call knick knick. Turn it. Can you see the hole? Turn it back. Okay, now the, this pipe is, like I said, this is the smoking end of the pipe. It would have extended up and had an elbow-shaped bowl uh -huh. on the end of it. And that's undoubtedly why they threw it out. They broke it while they were here. <laughs> the, rock, the big rock falls that you see, all the large rocks that are over here, fell within the last 30 years. These are things that fell within the living memory of some of the scouts here in Canada. He remembers when all the rocks were still up as part of the rock shelter. And I talked to another scout who was out here camping in the late 30s and early 40s, and he also remembers the rocks being up. So I was pretty certain that it occurred within the last 30 years or so. This edge and this edge certainly has worked, and I think he was trying to make a big triangle out of this. In other words, what he was trying to make was a point that looked like it well, cotton off, looked like this in shape. However, you can see that based on the size, his point is much larger than the real thing. And it's also made out of rock, which is local, uh, what we call serpentinite. And no Indian in his right mind would try to chip this stuff into a point. <laughs> it's an not ambitious uh, scoutmaster yeah. trying yeah. to interest the boys, Mike. Sure, well, he, he did, I'm sure. And I'm sure they were very happy to find things like that. But I think this is one of... A little bit. There you go. Yeah. That's one of Ernie's points. That's funny. And he admits to this. Huh? Yeah.